OK, we're back over on R1. We've already issued the auto secure command. So our running configuration has a lot of configuration that's different than the startup configuration. So let's take a look at some of the options that come with the configure replace command. And the first option is, and I, did we touch on this? I'm <laughs> losing my damn mind, is that you get to specify a source file. And that can be any of these sources. So you can see there's a ton of places that you can specify that you get this uh, file that you're going to replace the running configuration from. We're going to stick with our buddy startup configuration. Here's what we really wanted to see. So we've got force, ignore case, list, and time. Force basically, we'll run that real quick here. That just means that it's not going to warn you. It's just going to go ahead and do its thing. You know, about the time I go to pause, this is when it's going to actually finish. Watch this. Going to pause now. See? Motherfucker. All right, so it all it really skipped there was the initial dialogue. And I don't know why you would want to use this unless you just don't like to type the letter Y. Because that initial um, dialogue, as we saw, will point out some things if you bone something up. So if you were to specify a file, like in the example I just gave you, if you specify a, a file that has nothing in it, you wouldn't get warned, I assume. We're not going to go over that. But let me, I'm going to pause real quick because I'm going to load up auto config again or auto secure. OK, I'm back. I just issued the auto secure no interact command so that we have a difference between the running config and the startup config. So let's go back up here and take a look at the rest of the options. Ignore case, I don't know what that does. I read off the definition in the theory portion and like I said I have no clue what it's talking about there so I'm going to skip that one list is actually pretty cool list will show you the commands as they're applied and remember this does multiple passes it can do one pass it can do up to five so we're going to see probably two passes here if it's the same as the last couple of times and here we go you can see pass one the list of commands that were issued there and then on pass two it just had a couple of other commands that it was going to list so kinda neat if you want to see what's going on I'm gonna pause again load up okay and I'm back and I reloaded the I'll secure commands time this is the interesting one this is the one that you might want to look into using it's also the one that does require a little additional configuration and we'll see that here if we issue time and the question mark and you can see here configuration time in minute there was documentation that said that this was in seconds which doesn't seem to be true but let's pop over to R2 real quick here I just want to show you alright time now remember this is a slightly different version of iOS this is a 12.3 code and you can see here it says it's got different options it doesn't start at 1 it still goes to 120 but it says configuration time it doesn't tell you if it's in minutes seconds decades I'm going to assume that it's in minutes I mean I, I can't see a use for even 10 seconds because that would happen so quickly but just know that there is documentation out there that refers to seconds and you might find an iOS version that actually uses seconds so back over to R1 and we'll hit enter here it's not going to do anything oh, because it's an incomplete command that wasn't why I didn't think it was going to do anything we will issue two for two minutes now, that's what I wanted to see. Turn config archive on before using timed rollback. So in order for this option to work, we do have to enable uh, configuration archive. There's not a lot of configuration that we need to do. We basically just need to turn on archive and give it a place to save out the archive. There's another set of videos that go over configuration archive. And like I told you before, when I first ran across this configure replace command, I thought that this was going to be the case for all configure replace commands it turns out it's really only for time so let's jump in and do a real basic configure configuration <laughs> again typing talking not my forte so basically all you have to do is type archive and initially there are no arguments with that hit enter and now you can see there's a bunch of different arguments all we're really going to do is provide a path to store our backup configurations and that's all we really need to do so show archive and you can see this is what you'll see when it's enabled uh, if we issued it we can actually do that on R2 it'll tell you it's not enabled so basically what this is going to do is you can save out up to is it 15 I believe archives to your specified file system which is flash in this case 
all we're going to use it for is so that when we issue this command, that it will take it. And actually, I'm going to keep it at two, or should I do one? Actually, it doesn't matter because I'll probably have to pause anyways. You don't want to sit there and stare at the screen for a minute or two minutes, so I'll do two. Nothing different. We're replacing the running configuration with the startup configuration. So now if we, boy, I hope I didn't type a whole buttload of stuff here. Buttload of typing is in my future. No, there it is. So now we could see that there's no changes found. I'm actually going to pause the video here and we're going to wait a couple minutes to see what would happen. All right, and it's slightly past two minutes later and we can see something happened. We went through, we did our configuration replace. And remember we had set a configuration time of two minutes and what this does is that after it replaces the configuration, if within two minutes you do not issue the configuration, or is it configure, we'll see here, configure confirm command, it'll wait two minutes and then it will roll back your configuration replacement. So in this case we replaced the running configuration with the startup configuration and then two minutes later we've done exactly the opposite. We've gone ahead and we've rolled that back. So what it's doing and that's why it needs to lean on the archive configuration um, command set to enable to accomplish this is that you're going to go ahead and issue this command configure replace nv startup ram time 2. At that point iOS is going to go ahead and archive the current running configuration which means it's going to save it out to in this case flash so now you've got basically three configurations you've got your startup configuration your running configuration and then your archived running configuration so then it starts its normal configuration replacement uh, operation it replaces the running configuration with the startup configuration and normally you're done but now it's got this timer here and it says well I'm gonna start uh, ticking down a timer after two minutes if this network engineer hasn't said whoa this is what I want then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to replace the running configuration with my archived running configuration so basically restoring us back to where we were where the startup configuration and the running configuration are what they were before we started any of this nonsense and we can see this in action here here's where it completed here's where we paused the video and you could see okay that's the unlock we don't care about that that was us okay here's where it starts so this would be two minutes later now it's rolling back to and what is this flash my archives that is our archive configuration so this was the running config before we replaced it with the startup config and I hope I didn't confuse you there it's pretty nice because what's going on here is you're assuming that that startup configuration is a known good working configuration so imagine your horror when you do a configuration replacement and you find out oh crap I forgot this doesn't have a TACX key and I don't know what the local password is something that locks you out that's the biggest fear of a network engineer is that you're going to make a configuration change that completely locks you out of the box this case if that happens then what's gonna happen is gonna knock you out but two minutes later it's gonna go ahead and roll back and you should be able to get back in because you'll be working from the same configuration that you were when you started this command